Daniel Kirkendall. I'm the associate minister at Forsyth Church of Christ. I'm here with my partner, John Dobbs. He's the uh, preaching minister at Forsyth. And we're both honored that you've chosen to be here with us for this video experience. And we do hope that it's a worshipful time for you. Throughout the video, we'll have some songs and a time of communion. Um, and during that, if you don't mind, use the comment section to tell everyone hello and uh, maybe even give John an amen during his sermon. At the conclusion of the video, we'll have a few announcements um, and we'll direct you to our website, which is going to be on the screen throughout the video, facoc.org. But before we do all that, we'd like to get started with a short video. Well, we really are glad that you're here, and that video does remind us of the majesty and the power of God, and we're so grateful for that. We are in the middle of a series of messages called Fuel for Your Faith, and it's a study of the book of Philippians, and I hope that you will take some time, and I encourage you to sit down in, in, in one sitting and read through the whole book of Philippians. It's only four chapters. It won't take you very long, but, but by reading it all together, you'll, you'll get a bigger picture of what Apostle Paul was trying to send our way in that message. And so today we're just in our second lesson of, on Philippians. And so if you missed the first one, you can always go to our YouTube channel and follow up with any messages that you have missed along the way. There's a, a television show called America Ninja Warrior. It's in its 14th season, so it's my guess you've probably at least heard of it if you aren't an active uh, viewer of that show. It's, it's people as young as 15 from all across America compete on these uh, the world's most difficult obstacle courses. And uh, they do this for a prize. It's a million-dollar prize for the one who can conquer all four stages at the national finals that take place in Las Vegas. It's quite an exciting program to watch. And, and it's interesting that that program is possibly merging into one of the uh, more traditional arenas for sports. In, uh, sports Illustrated said that the Ninja Warrior course uh, is currently under consideration to be added as the fifth discipline in the modern pentathlon when the games return to the United States. And so anybody who's watching that show and who likes it, I'm sure will be energized by that and, and want to uh, tune in and watch that. Uh, Apostle Paul uh, oftentimes used athletic images and sports images in his, uh, his writings. And so it's kind of interesting to think about that. And, and today we're, we're moving into the second half of Philippians chapter 1, and our study's called Fuel for Your Faith Overall. But today we're hearing Paul's message that Christians are advancing through the challenges. Now, challenges happen all the time. Challenges can hinder our faith. They can kind of get in the way of our, our living, the commitment that we've chosen to live for Christ. They can uh, derail our discipleship. They can uh, steal the focus from our mission. And we can sometimes be thinking about the challenges that we're facing or what's happened to us instead of remembering that we have a mission uh, as Christians and as followers of Jesus. And so we want to uh, recognize that everybody is dealing with some hard things in their life. And, and what faith does is it gives us the power to make it through those obstacles and make it beyond them. And in this section of Scripture, Paul really opens up about some things that he's facing in his own personal life, how that's affected his faith, and, uh, and how he plans to address those things. And so our beginning place is Philippians chapter 1 and verse 12, where he says, Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. Now, that's a really interesting th way to say that because if you could, if we can picture Paul in prison, we would say the gospel's not advancing, it's being uh, held back. But Paul says, I want you to know it's advancing because he said, I want you to know what's happened to me. And so, what has happened to Paul? Well, he's currently in prison. N.T. Wright said that for a traveling apostle to be put in prison must have seemed like a concert pianist having his hands tied behind his back. How can he possibly continue the work that he's been called to do? And there are a lot of potentials for, for this imprisonment of Paul to, to be uh, perceived in a lot of different ways. It, it could be a source of embarrassment to some believers. They might have followed after Christ, after hearing Apostle Paul, but now he's in prison and, 
and they're kind of wondering, you know, should I have followed after his teachings? It could be a discouragement to Paul himself. I'm sure he'd like to be out traveling and on his missionary journeys like he was before. It, it could give his enemies a platform to speak against him, and we're going to read a little bit about that. But, but the people who weren't big fans of Apostle Paul could use this against him. And then it could have also been a source of shame in, in his own life. And he's going to mention that toward the end of this text as well. So a lot of things could be derailing the discipleship and mission of Apostle Paul. But when we read this text, that's not what we see. We see that he believes the gospel is being advanced in his life. And I really want to remember that things happen in your life that are hard, that are challenging, that are sometimes discouraging. And so I want to look at this text and say, what does Paul say when we encounter those moments, those obstacles, those challenges? How are we going to advance through those in faith? And so that's our message for today is to think about what is he saying about advancing through the challenges. Well, the first thing is he teaches us to stay focused. Verse 13, he says, As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And so Paul says, I want us to stay focused because even in prison, Paul is sharing the gospel of Christ. We have this picture of him being in chains, and, and what we know about that kind of situation is that, that he was chained to a Roman soldier in six-hour shifts. And so that soldier is there chained to Apostle Paul, and he's, they're hearing him pray and read scriptures and dictate letters and receive visitors. And it's very possible Paul actually conversed with those Roman soldiers and talked to them about Jesus and about the, the gospel message. That was what, that's the only thing he ever wanted to talk about. And so it re, he remains focused on his obsession with Jesus by seeing that he's in prison. And this is not where he'd like to be. This is a challenge, but it has potential there's potential here even in this situation. So when you face obstacles in your life, stay focused on Jesus. Stay clear. He says here that, that it is clear throughout the whole palace that I'm in chains for Christ. You stay clear about your, your commitment to Christ and about your discipleship. You stay clear that you're a servant of the Lord. And that's the most important thing about your life. And we stay clear and face these obstacles with, um, by, by having um, a, a discipleship that encompasses our whole life. It's our words. It's our actions. It's the way we serve. It's our compassion for others. It's our attitudes. All those things tell us we're focused in on being a servant of Christ. And so many Bible characters teach us the same message. If you read through the Scriptures... And you see all of these uh, fantastic, devoted, godly men and women and the things that they endure and go through, and they still hang on to God. And that's what Paul is doing in this text. Warren Wiersbe said, The same God who used Moses' rod and Gideon's pitchers and David's sling used Paul's chains. And little did the Romans realize that the chains they affixed to his wrists would release Paul instead of bind him. In fact, Paul was continually on mission. The fact that he was in prison dictated his circumstances, but he stayed focused on his mission. And so when we let our life circumstances cause us to lose connection to Christ, we miss the opportunities that let God work through those circumstances. So when hard times come, when obstacles, challenges come, stay focused. And then be confident. Look at verse 14. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and, and are all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. So they are made confident because of what has happened to Paul. You know, influence is such an important part of the Christian life. It's We're all influenced by other people. We're all influenced when uh, there are people around us, whether good or bad, for, you know, the plus or the minus. It depends. But, but we're influenced by other people. Again, Warren Wiersbe said, discouragement has a way of spreading, but so does encouragement. And because of Paul's 
at Joyful Attitude, the believers in Rome took fresh courage. And so we want to be people who are not only encouraged, but who spread encouragement to other people. And when you're facing your obstacles in life, when you're facing those big challenges, it's important to remember, first of all, that you're not alone. It's not just you in this world. There are other people who have faced those same challenges, those same obstacles, and held on to Christ all the way through. Now, that doesn't mean they did it perfectly. It doesn't mean that they are, you know, uh, to be imitated completely. But it does encourage you that you're not the only one who's had to go through the struggle that you're enduring right now. Many other people have walked that road ahead of you. And remember that your actions can be a catalyst for others who are struggling in the same area. By keeping your commitment to Christ and following Him throughout your days, no matter what obstacles or difficulties there are, you are encouraging other people. You're helping them to be strong in the Lord. And by continuing your walk in faith, you'll have an opportunity to share the gospel without fear. Because really, the gospel is what it's all about. No matter what happens in life, the gospel message is so important. And it's all about attitude and about the way we perceive and, and look at the things that happen to us. Viktor Frankl was a Holocaust survivor, and he observed this. He said, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. That's one thing if I say that, but to hear a Holocaust survivor say that you can choose your attitude in any circumstance. That's powerful. It's what Paul's trying to tell us, that by staying on mission and being committed to Christ, even in prison, he was able to stay focused and to be confident, and that confidence encouraged other people to be confident. And then I think he goes into a really important topic here when he, when he suggests that we need to rise above. Look at verse 15. He said, It is true. That some people preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. But what does it really matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And I think about this attitude that Paul has because not only is he experiencing the difficulty of being in prison and, and all the things that go along with that, there are people outside who are trying to take advantage of his situation. He points out two kinds of people here, those who share the gospel out of love and those who have ulterior motives, who want to hurt Paul, who, who are sharing the gospel and, and poor, out of poor motives. And his recommendation is to rise above those who try to hurt us and to live for Christ anyway. And we live in a fallen world, and, and we're surrounded by sinners. And there's just no doubt that there are times when people that ought to be supportive and ought to love us are really working against us. There are, all, all, there are enemies that we face. There are people who don't like us because we're Christians or who don't like our expressions of following after Jesus. But the most important thing is that the gospel is preached. That's what Paul said. And so rising above those who might work against us could involve praying for them, lifting up their name before the Father. Even those we consider to be enemies, we know that Jesus encouraged us to pray for our enemies. To determine to continue to work for the Lord in spite of criticism. If you're doing something for God and you're doing something for the Lord and, and, and there are people who are ungodly people criticizing you for trying to do something good, just remember that, that the fruit of all this is the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about serving God and keep, keeping on serving God and leave all, the benef all of the harvest, the, the fruit, the results, leave that all up to God. And then remember the mission. We have a mission. The main objective of Christianity is the mission of sharing the gospel with the world. And so we have something that's more important than the opinions of, or, or the attitudes or actions of anybody else. And so rise above what is happening to you when you're facing obstacles. And sometimes those obstacles and challenges might be 
people who aren't in tune with the Lord. Rise above that and keep doing what you're doing. So Paul's telling us, stay focused, be confident, rise above, and lean on Jesus. In verse 18, the second half, he says, Because of this I rejoice, and yes, I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. And so Paul continues this theme of joy that runs throughout all four chapters, expressing that he will continue to rejoice. And notice the the source of his joy. Their prayers, he says, through your prayers I'm rejoicing, knowing that they're praying for him. It's so important to have people praying for us and for us to pray for others. And also God's provision, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. That's an interesting phrase, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Paul uses it uh, three different times in his writings. but, But it's just telling us to focus in on Jesus and the fact that the Holy Spirit is with us, and, uh, and that's giving us strength and joy and peace and all the fruit of the Spirit that we read about, and faith that it's all going to turn out for His deliverance. When he says that, he says, it will all turn out for my deliverance. He's quoting a scripture from the Old Testament from Job chapter 13 and verse 16. And I find it interesting that in this moment, as Paul is writing and talking about our attitude and facing difficulties and struggles that he invokes the words of Job, who certainly identified with the, suf- the struggle of suffering uh, and the faith that, that some better times are coming. There's going to be deliverance. You know, when you encounter the obstacles of life, you do well to engage in prayer and trust in the Spirit of Jesus and to believe that we will experience deliverance. I think that involves a lot of things. It involves being deeply convicted that God loves us, that He's walking with us through our struggles, and, and that you know he's all, He cares for us, and seeing everything through the lens of the big picture. We can focus in on all of our struggles and troubles and hardships and kind of get lost in the mud of all that. You know, there's no way out. There's no way to fix it sometimes. There's no way to, to deal with it. And instead, what we need to do is back up and see the big picture. And that's the picture of the story of the gospel, that Jesus came and he died and he rose again. And that what happened at Calvary changed the whole world. It changed your world. It changed my world. And to kind of look at the big picture, how can we help other people experience change because of what Jesus did? And to move through your days with a single passion, Christ and the gospel. And that plays out in a thousand ways in your life, in your relationship, and in the events that you face. Leaning on Jesus is what we do in the hard times. That's our major source of strength. And so Paul, I think, ends this section with another connected idea, and that is to exalt Jesus always. Look at verse 20. He says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. See, no matter what happened next, and Paul didn't know what was going to happen next moment by moment, just like we don't. But he says, I always want to exalt Jesus. In my life, I want to exalt Jesus. And in my death, I want to exalt Jesus. This is his passion. It's demonstrated in his life over and over again. I like how somebody wrote about this. They said to the average person, Christ is a misty figure in history who lived centuries ago. As the unsaved watch the believer go through a crisis, they can see Jesus magnified and brought so much closer. And the believer's body is a lens that makes a little Christ look very big and a distant Christ come very close. It's so important that we remember to exalt Jesus because that's part of our mission. It's letting other people know and the whole world around us. Jesus is our strength. He's our bedrock. He's the one that gives our life meaning. He's the one that gives our death meaning. And so exalt Jesus, magnify Jesus. Help him to seem very big and large in your life because he is. And help other people to see that. You know, our lives might seem like they have as many obstacles as an America Ninja warrior course, 
But even if they do, even if you face stripe after stripe, trouble after trouble, obstacle after obstacle, we still have the admonition here to advance through the challenges with the gospel of Christ. So stay focused, be confident, rise above the troubles, lean on Jesus, and always exalt Jesus in your life every day. Have you established a connection to Jesus so that when you face obstacles, you can do so with the divine help that God promises and never walk through it alone? If you haven't, I encourage you to to reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you about that. Maybe you're ready to be baptized or maybe you're ready to reconnect with Jesus that you walked away from maybe some time in the past. But whatever the situation is, always stay connected to the Lord. Because when it comes to facing those obstacles and challenges in life, you don't want to do it alone. You want to do it with God and with God's people. You know, we're going to take a moment and have a moment of communion and think about that for a minute. Like we do every week, you know, we never get tired of thanking Jesus for what he's done for us. All of this came when Jesus died on the cross for our sins. The body and the blood of Christ sacrificed for us to give us hope, not just a hope of heaven one day. That's there, and it's important. We don't ever want to forget that. But a hope for today, for the struggles that I'm facing right now, the things that have made me cry in the night, the things that have made me made it hard for me to smile during the day. Maybe it's your health, maybe it's your marriage, maybe it's your job, maybe it's finances, maybe it's a sin, an addiction, or a, something you just can't let go of. But whatever it is, the Lord is here to strengthen us and help us hour by hour, minute by minute, day by day. And so we're so thankful for that. We're going to ask God to, to bless us as we commune together in recognition that the power we have to make it through each day is only through Jesus. Let's pray together. God, we, as we spend our time today studying your word, we just see that Apostle Paul had such a, such a great passion for you. and It's always, always centered around Jesus. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you were willing to die on the cross for us. We don't deserve it, but thank you that we don't have to go through our hardships alone. This body, this blood this, that we are partaking of in communion, it, it reminds us once again of the great sacrifice that was made so that we could belong to you. And that's all we really want. Help us never to lose sight of that fact, Father. Help us never to forget what Jesus has done for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, what a wonderful message and one that I know we can all relate to, the, the difficulties and the struggles that we face in our, in our everyday life. So here at Forsyth Church of Christ, we want to encourage you to lean on Jesus, uh, like John said, uh, during those difficult times. But also know that as a church, we are here to help you out if there's anything that you need. If you go to facoc.org, it should be on the bottom of the screen right now. There's a, a number of things that you can do there. There's uh, general information, but there's also a communications tab where you can... Um, send us a message. It's an email that goes to the church office. Uh, if you have a prayer request, if you have a physical need, if uh, you have a question about life or the Bible or the relationship between God and man, anything we can help with, that's what we're doing these videos for and that's why uh, we exist as uh, a church. Before we go though, I'd like to, uh, to close us out in, in a quick prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for the opportunity that we have at Forsyth to uh, put a video together and to, and to send it out into the world. And I pray that um, ears that need to hear the message uh, will hear it and hearts that need to uh, receive you uh, will be open to receiving you. Lord, we, uh, we want to glorify you and honor you in all that we do. And above all, we thank you for Jesus and, and the life that he lived, the death that he died, and, the, and his victory over death that gives us hope, life, and joy. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.